Hey guys, well, after looking at several of your essays, I can tell that several of you are struggling with MLA format. So I wanted to show you guys exactly what MLA format needs to look like so that you can be prepared for the rest of the year. First things first, you need to know some terminology. There is a heading and that is gonna be left justified on your screen. It is only on the first page. The other thing that you have is called the header. The header is going to be your last name plus the page number and it's going to be on every single page. On your heading, you need to have your name, your last name, my name, please remember I'm a miss in my SS, and then the full title of our class, Phoenix 2 with the Roman numerals, pre AP IV GT, and then here you'll put in, you can type in six period or whichever period you happen to be in. Okay, now we get to your date. Your date needs to be what's in called either military format or in British format. That's what MLA requires. It's the day, then the month, then the year. This should be the date that your paper is due. So for example, your Anthem essay was due um, on the 5th of September 2012. Okay, so that's what your should look like. Now, one of the biggest problems I noticed when you guys had turned in your paper is that from the space from 2012 to your title is huge. This is just one double space. The spacing from here to here should be the same as the space from here to here. Okay? On your title, a lot of you guys chose to make your title big and huge and underlined and folded and italics and all exciting, but unfortunately, MLA is very boring and they just want it plain Jane, 12 point Times New Roman font. That is the font that should be on all of your paper. Here in the body, also up in the header, must be 12 point Times New Roman font. Next is the margins. The margins all the way around your paper should be one inch. Also, you must double space your entire paper. That meaning that the space from here to here is the same distance as from here to here. Okay, so that's what MLA looks like. Now for some of you who need um, a little bit more um, direction, I'm going to go ahead and start a new document and show you exactly what that needs to look like. All right. So here we go. Let's get it about that big. Okay, first things first is we type in, I'm going to pretend like I'm the student. Well, no, we'll, we'll let my sister pretend like she's going to be a student. This is Lindsay Green. Her teacher is Miss Green. This is Phoenix to pre AP IV GT. And she's in fourth period. And the date of her paper is due on, let's say, the 17th of September, 2012. Okay. Now notice, I have typed in my heading. It is left justified. Now I need to check, okay, are my margins okay? So I'm going to go up to margins. And luckily, on this particular computer, the default is one, is, is this is the last custom, but this is the default. So I went ahead and changed it. You might need to do that on your computer as well. All right, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and type up the header. Notice I just double clicked near the top of my paper. I'm going to hit the Home tab. I'm going to now right justify it, so it'll take the cursor all the way over to the right side. Lindsay's last name is Green, so I'm going to type in Green. I'm going to make a space, and then I need to insert a page number. So that's going to be right here at the top, so say current position because you just want it to go wherever your cursor's at. I just choose the first one. There you go. Now, the default on your computer is going to be a font different than Times New Roman, so you're going to need to highlight it and type it in, and it's 12 point font, so it needs to be a 12, not an 11. There we go. Alright, once you've done that, you can hit the escape button, and it'll take you out of there. So, uh, what else? Okay, so here we are. Now we're ready to type the title. So I'm going to hit the enter button one time. I'm now going to go over and center justify it and type in some kind of the title, the title 
needs to be indicative of whatever the paper is, but creative titles are always fun too. So we'll call this, she's a doc, she's learning to be a doctor. So let's call this musical medicine. All right, again, I'm hitting the return button. It's going to center my paper. That's just for the title. I need to go back to left justified. I'm gonna click this button. And then all paragraphs must be indented. So there we are, and I'm going to begin typing about how much I love musical medicine. Yay, musical medicine. Okay, so there you go, you get the idea. So the next thing I need you to do is to go ahead and highlight all of your text, come to the top, type in Times New Roman. Again, it needs to be 12 font. While it is highlighted, go up here to Paragraph, and see where it says, um, do not add space between paragraphs of the same style. This is imperative that you check this box because once you do that, that ensures that all of your spacing is uniform. All right, so we're gonna do that and then see where it says line spacing. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna click double. Once you have this box checked and this mark double, you can hit okay. There you go. So. I've got my, my, my headings correct, my headers correct, I have a title, my paragraph is indented. There's a period. All right. So I'm going to go back to our previous example because I want to show you one more thing about um, MLA format as far as documentation within a paragraph. Here we are. Okay. So clearly you haven't read this, this particular book. It's called um, Prometheus Bound, if you ever get the chance to read it. It's very, very good. And it's very fitting because um, Rand mentions um, Prometheus in the book Anthem. So what you need to do when you are embedding your quotes is you need to have your quotes are going to be designated with quotation marks. So the quote begins here. He tracked down fire where it sprang up from. And then you're going to end your quotation. Please notice that your quotation marks end before the citation. The citation is going to have the authors, the first time you mention the author, is going to have their last name and then the page number or line number, depending on what you have. So in this particular case, um, I believe it's the line number. Moving on is a different documentation here. So this is this is how you do the, um, uh, this is a reference for a Bible. So there you are. Um, so that's pretty much it. Please know that your um, documentation always goes next to the period and that your quotation marks must end before you start a parenthesis. If it happens to go, if the quotation and the parenthetical documentation are near each other. So I think that pretty much clears it up. If you guys have any more questions, please feel free to ask me. If you just want a quick crash course right here in the Works Cited page, again, it's all 12 point times New Roman. You put them in alphabetical order based on whatever the first letter is here. So you have A, S, and T, so it's in alphabetical order. You have what's called a hanging indent where the top line hangs out farther than the second line, and all of them end with a period. So it's just a little tiny uh, crash course in Works Cited page. And notice that it is Works Cited because there are three works. If it was just one work in here, it would be Works Cited. But there we go. So I hope this was helpful to you. And um, please make sure that you have listened to this video and are using correct MLA format on